This is a song about cedar diodes. Cedar diodes. Oh yeah. Cedar diodes. Oh yeah. I like to make circuits with my cedar diodes. Good afternoon. Thank you for watching. As I often say, I am not an expert. Please consult textbooks for more accuracy. I create these videos as memoranda. I have read various source material. This video gathers what I have learned. Often I omit fundamental concepts. Or more truthfully, anything that is too technical for me, I omit. This video is exclusively about Zener diodes. And before I say more, hopefully you have a basic concept of how diodes work. If not, I have created some videos on diodes. Links below. It's helpful if you know concepts such as biasing and avalanche breakdown. A Zener diode is very similar to a conventional diode. A Zener diode has a PN junction. Both conventional and Zener diodes behave much the same when forward biased. However, what makes a Zener diode unique is its application when reverse biased. A Zener diode is designed to allow current to flow backwards when a specific reverse voltage is reached. With regard to Zener diodes, this reverse voltage is otherwise known as Zener voltage. Moreover, Zener diodes are manufactured with a wide variety of Zener voltages. I have read that variable Zener diodes exist, but had trouble finding such a component. Search results yield variable Zener diode circuits, but the extent of my internet search is not that great. If I come up with something, I'll leave it in the comments section below, if I come up with an answer. Zener diodes are used to generate low power stabilized supply rails from a higher voltage and to provide reference voltages for circuits, especially stabilized power supplies. They are also used to protect circuits from over voltage, especially electrostatic discharge, ESD. Without getting into technical jargon and atomic theory, I was trying to sort out whether avalanche breakdown is the same thing as the Zener effect. Both are a type of electrical breakdown. However, it seems the Zener effect is associated with the sciency concept of tunneling. The Wikipedia article on the Zener effect says, in general, diode junction breakdowns occurring below 5 volts are caused by the Zener effect, whereas breakdowns occurring above 5 volts are caused by the avalanche effect. Tunneling is a subject I briefly looked into and is very relevant to Zener diodes. But the level of theoretical verbiage is more than I can handle. As well, as an electronics hobbyist, I see diminished benefit in deeply studying tunneling. From what I can tell, tunneling occurs when a wave function propagates through a potential barrier. Indubitably. I was reading the construction section of the Wikipedia page, and it lists some features specific to the Zener diode. But I found it complex. So I thought maybe if I put it into a chart, this might help. And especially if I compared it to a conventional diode. The problem is that I didn't find enough information regarding a so-called conventional diode to fill up the right side of this chart. But I still kept it in this chart form, because maybe it can be seen that the information on the left, which highlights the specific features of a Zener diode, is more specific to Zener diodes and almost a contrast to conventional diodes. So maybe keeping it in this chart like this is helpful. It's helpful to me. And I will read this chart. 
Zener diode, heavy doping of PN junction. Depletion region formed is very thin, and thus the electric field is consequently very high. Breakdown voltage is controlled accurately throughout the doping process in manufacture. Tighter tolerances for breakdown are a feature. From what I gather, it seems that sometimes when speaking about Zener diodes, the Zener effect can get bunched together with avalanche, even though maybe that's not technically correct, right or wrong. Maybe you disagree. Breakdown voltage for Zeners can vary widely from 1.2 volts to 200 volts. I was challenged to summarize this comment about Zeners and put it in my chart, so I will just read this verbatim. For diodes that are lightly doped, the breakdown is dominated by the avalanche effect rather than the Zener effect. Consequently, the breakdown voltage is higher, over 5.6 volts for these devices. I want to add to that comment, digest it a little bit, but if I did, I might run the risk of providing erroneous information. I'm learning this. I'm not an expert. Again, just generally, both the Zener effect and avalanche breakdown are present in all Zener diodes. And generally, the Zener effect happens at lower reverse voltages, lower voltage values, and avalanche breakdown occurs at higher reverse voltages. All right, so just to recap, a Zener diode acts like a two-way gate and in forward direction, it might take only about 0.6 volts to get it to open. Very much like a conventional diode. But in the reverse direction, a Zener diode behaves very differently. And it has to meet the Zener diode's breakdown voltage. In a lot of textbooks, this is denoted as VZ. And of course, the breakdown voltage, which kind of combines the idea of avalanche and the Zener effect. Well, this Zener breakdown voltage is specific to the model of diode. And there are big charts which can be found, even with a Google search, if you type in Zener diode chart, and there's something that looks just like this. So I'm going to pick out a few values. So I'd like to talk about the 1N522B. Its Zener breakdown voltage is 3 volts. The 1N4733A, it has a 5.1 Zener breakdown voltage. And the 1N4739A, and it has a 9.1 Zener breakdown voltage. So I understand Power ratings are around a quarter to 50 watts. They have quite a range. So here is a chart of the Zener curves of two of the diodes I just mentioned. And you can see on the positive side of the graph, all of the diodes tend to have a forward breakover voltage of around 0.6 volts. And a little bit confusing, perhaps, to visualize. On the left side of the graph, there is the Zener breakdown voltage which I suppose is listed as negative voltage graphically, but I think maybe it's better to just visualize a diode being flipped around in a circuit and having current run through backwards. And this is most often how Zener diodes are configured in circuits anyway. So the following charts show some examples of how Zeners can be used in circuits and behave as voltage regulators, which prevents any supply voltage or load current variations from pulling down the voltage supplied to the load. Guys, I'm just really tired. You'll have to look at these charts and understand it for yourselves. Sorry. Really sorry to let you down. Here's a picture of a selection of popular Zener diodes, and you can see the different types and packages it comes in. And uh, here's a chart. You might want to pause the screen. Just have a look at it. All right, so I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. I mean, uh, speaking here. 
So here are some different Zener diode applications. Split supply from single transformer winding. Here's a method for obtaining a split supply from a non-center tapped transformer using two Zener diodes. Z1 and Z2 are selected of equal voltage and power rating for desired split voltage and load. The temperature dependency of the Zener diodes make this arrangement less accurate than a supply that uses two separate regulator ICs. However, it's a simple alternative for non-critical applications. You might also want to look up information on power supplies too, not contained in this video. Anyway, uh, the next example is the waveform modifier and limiter, and I drew this picture up myself. Two opposing Zener diodes act to clip both halves of an input signal. Here a sine wave is converted to a near square wave. Besides acting to reshape a waveform, this arrangement can also be placed across the output terminal of a DC power supply to prevent unwanted voltage transients from reaching an attached load. The breakdown voltages in that case must be greater than the supply voltage, but smaller than the maximum allowable transient voltage. A single bidirectional TVS, and I'll leave a link for that below what that means, does the same thing, and you might want to look up uh, more information on transient suppressors. Voltage shifter. This circuit shifts the input voltage down by an amount equal to the breakdown voltage of the Zener diode. As the input goes positive, the Zener diode doesn't go into breakdown until it reaches 5.1 volts for the 1N5281B. After that, the output follows the input, but shifted 5.1 volts below it. When the input goes negative, the output will follow the input, but shifted by 0.6 volts, the forward threshold voltage drop of the Zener. Another circuit I'd like to show you is the voltage regulator booster. Zener diodes can be used to raise the level of a voltage regulator and obtain different regulated voltage outputs. Here 3 volts and 6 volt Zener diodes are placed in series to push the reference ground of a 5 volt regulator IC up 9 volts to a total of 14 volts. Note that in real designs, capacitors may be required at the input and output. For further reading, I recommend you go look up more information on voltage regulator ICs. Here's another circuit. It's called an overvoltage protection circuit. If excessive voltage is applied to the jack, say via an incorrectly rated wall plug-in supply, the Zener diode will conduct until the fuse is blown. The breakdown voltage of the Zener should be slightly above the maximum tolerable voltage that the load can handle. Either a fast or a slow blow fuse can be used, depending on the sensitivity of the load. The current and voltage ratings of the fuse must be selected according to the expected limits of the application. Note that there are other similar overvoltage protection designs that use special devices such as the TVSs and varistors. These devices are cheap and are very popular in design today. The next circuit I would like to show you is the increasing wattage rating of Zener. Here's a simple circuit that effectively increases the wattage rating, current handling capacity, of a Zener diode by letting a power transistor take care of the majority of the regulating current. The Zener itself takes a small portion of the total current and creates a base voltage divided by current with the help of the base to ground resistor that changes the collector to emitter current flow according to any variations in line or load current. And the last circuit example I would like to show you is a simple LED voltmeter. Here's a simple circuit voltmeter that uses the sequence of Zener diodes with increasing breakdown voltage. LEDs glow in sequence as the input voltage rises. It's okay to use different Zener diodes so long as the series resistors limit current through LED to a safe level. Most LEDs are happiest around 20 milliamps or so. You can calculate the worst case scenario to be at the 5 volt LED leg when voltage in equals 16 volts. 
If you're looking for more sophistication, you can always use an analog to digital converter along with a microcontroller and LCD or LED display. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope this video has been informative. This is a song about cedar diodes. Cedar diodes.